exceptional moment. And he tells him, after he says, I've done all these things, he says, well, well then, looking at him, he says, you lack one thing. Take everything that you have, sell it, give it to the poor, where you'll find treasure in heaven, and then come and follow me. And for some reason, the young man wasn't satisfied with that, and he wanted to continue his journey, as was, with eternal life, but he didn't want to go that extra mile. So then Jesus turns to his disciples and begins to talk to them about wealth and how hard it is to get into heaven, and it's easier for a camel to get through the eye of a needle than a rich man, and that's literal. It, there's no magical gates. There's no magical theological discussion. It just means it's, it's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. You just can't do it. And so you just can't push a camel through the eye of a needle. And for those of us who kind of sometimes tear our pants and we have to get that little thread and have to adjust our glasses and get that thread, we know how hard it is to get a piece of thread through a needle. So he, so he, he has this conversation with his disciples and he begins to instruct them that don't let your wealth fool you. And, and this is not an indictment against wealthy people because there's wealthy Christians everywhere. There's folks that got some money. There's some saved folks that have some money. So this wasn't an indictment against rich people, as some might think. He's just saying, if your wealth is what's important to you or what you're doing outside of this question is important, then so be it. But know that your treasure, your your work that you do for God, the things that you do for Christ, as they say, the things you do for Christ will last, then, then take a look at that. So examine that. And then he goes a little bit further, and he keeps on talking about the conversation. And it seems like the young man just walks away. He, he has no understanding of the next step. So I came to the conclusion that this sermon is not about how much you have, how much wealth that you have. It's really about how you balance your life in doing the things for God and in doing the things for life. Salvation, Romans 10 said, the word is near you. The word of God is near you that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead then thou shalt be saved. There's nothing else. This is not by works. This work is not by works lest anyone should boast, Paul says. This is about what you believe. So there's nothing that the young man had to do but he carries the conversation forward based on his instruction to his disciples and lets them know that you must balance. If you want to go all out and give up everything, want to become an oblate sister of Providence in Baltimore, or you want to become a Jesuit or go to St. Mary's Seminary and become a priest, whatever, whatever it is, if you want to be one extreme or just one who comes on Sunday morning, enjoys what the choir sings, enjoys what the preacher preaches, and you just want to do that, then it's okay. We make a big deal about pressing people into places that they don't want to go, when really this is about, what do you want to do? Have you ever been asked to balance, and that's what he was asking the young man, then find a balance. But the young man walked away, so instead of having this conversation with the young man, he has it with his, his disciples. And then after he talks about this richness in the needle, then, then the disciples say, well, my God, who can be saved? And Jesus said, you already saved. This salvation is not the question here. He says, it's not the question. And Peter says, well, we gave up all. Where's our reward? We gave up all just to follow you. And he says, he says that ain't it either because anybody who gives up becomes an oblate sister of Providence or a priest or someone who goes and becomes a missionary in Haiti or Africa. Whatever you do, you're going to receive a reward for that. He says, nobody's giving up anything and, and not receive the benefits of it. You know, I get my Social Security check. Y'all know I get my social security check? That's my every, that's my, I'm looking on the first and third, they send it on the end of the month. I'm like, I want it on the first or the third. I don't want it at the end of the month. But I decided that I was going to start giving back to Nigeria. And when I gave back to Nigeria, the money I get, I got a letter in the mail. I'm, I'm sound like the Pentecostal folks now, aren't I? I got a letter in the mail that said, your social security has been adjusted upward. 
We miscalculated. We're going to give you some more. Linda immediately says, I, I know how we can spend that. I got this bill. <laughs> but but, it, but it, it, it was adjusted upward because there's a benefit. I said, I'm going to start sending my money to Nigeria, to Bishop Dogo. And then God says, well, thank you. I'll, you see, there's, there's a balance. Whatever you do, it's always it's reciprocity. It's God's law of reciprocity. It's going to give back to you. So he said, you didn't give up mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and families and your job he, and, and, pers- and, uh, and all of this stuff for nothing. He said, it's going to come back to you. And even those of you who feel like you're left out and last, he says, you're going to be first. And the those of you who were first, you're going to be last. You'll no longer be the lender. I mean, you'll become the lender and not the borrower. You know, you won't be scrimping. So the real way the conversation is about how are you going to balance your time so that you can do what God is pushing into your heart to do? What is it, what is it you really want to do? How, how do you want to change the lives of people? And I know some of you, they, you leave here on Sunday morning, and I don't know what you do during the week, but you do some marvelous things for people that you might not even ever tell anybody. But he's saying to you, Choose that what you want to do. Don't worry about eternal life. You're saved. If you're a believer, you're saved. That's what he's telling young man. Just go on about your business and be saved. But he says he wanted a little more. And he's, so he's saying to you who want a little more, now learn how to balance what it is that you really want to do for God. If it's giving, don't worry about the amount that you give. Give from your heart. If it's service, don't worry about how much time you give. Just give it. Give something. Give something back. That's what he was saying to the young man. You won't regret it. As Al Jarrell said, if you got $10, bet it. God is going to bless you beyond measure because of what you, because of what you do. God is not mocked, so, for, so ever you sow, you shall also reap. You're going to get it back. He's saying, find the balance. Believing is the easy part. That's the part that sustains us. We're that. We are definitely believers. But now, what do we do? And I think that's the conversation from now through Advent. It's like, what do we do come January 1st? What will we be doing? Who will we be helping? What children? What seniors? What folks in poverty? What is our assignment? What is it God has called us to do? And I think you're going to discover over the next 90 days what God has called you to do. Embrace it. Live it. Give to it. Sacrifice for it. Find the joy in it. Don't be miserable. Be joyous. And God will bless you. So here's the young man. He walks away. The disciples are a little confused. And now you sit here. And in that same place, trying to decide what is it I'm going to do for God. God has plenty for you to do, and I know this is true because I declare it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all the people of God said, amen. Amen. Hey, uh, we got bags on the back row. There are bags back there. You can pick it up, and they have crayons and some other stuff, and yeah. You can go around that way. And if it has a name on it, don't worry about it. Now, I think your name might even be on it. Okay? Where's your brother? Where's your brother? Huh? Hmm? Hmm? Oh, um, it sounds like me. Didn't want to come. All right. <laughs> Amen. Oh, John. Let, let him let play. Let us stand for let the creed. Let, let him play. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Let's not stand for the creed. <laughs> <laughs>
Please stand for the creed. In your books on page 358, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the pictures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, the Father and the Son, and he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please turn to page 385 for the prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Carey, for this gathering, and for all the ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among, no, among nations, and for all the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, whom we remember today. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. continue to pray for our brothers and sisters that are asking for our prayers John Roxanne James Pat Joel Lauren Ann, James Bernice Amy Mary Lou John Brittany Joyce John Sharon Tony Michael Nikki, Marilyn, Connie, Denise, Marilyn, Frank, Velma, Burnett, Jamie, Ray, Phoebe, Rico McGowan, the Skurlock family. We ask your prayers continuously for our members who are home and those who aren't able to be with us. We pray for our own presiding retired Bishop Michael Curry, and for the new bishop-elect, Sean Rowan. We pray, God, that your hand might be upon them. We pray for our own clergy, for Nathaniel and John. We pray for Randy. And God, bless us now in this communion of saints. Bless us as we come together, gathering our hearts and minds, knowing that all things are possible with you. And so we ask you to be in our hearts today and give us the liberation and the freedom that comes with believing in your dear son, Jesus Christ. We ask all of these things and all of these prayers in your name. 
Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 360 of your Book of Common Prayer. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep us in eternal life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, my siblings in Christ, please stand with me. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, peace. Peace, my brother. Good morning. First, I would like to welcome the visitors we have out with us this morning, tell you how blessed we are that you came to worship with us today. And we're so happy, we're just happy to see you. And after church, after the service is over, if you'll go through these doors and into the Great Hall, you'll get the best cup of coffee you can have in Annapolis on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Very best. <laughs> now, just a few announcements. One, on, okay, Saturday, October 19th, the Saturday, from 9.30 until 11.30, two hours. Stop the bleed. That is going to be held in a classroom since the Great Hall will be occupied with something else. So if you've signed up for it, please come. If you haven't signed up for it, please come in a classroom. And if the classroom is too full, we'll go in on the cross. We can make the food. Thank you very much. Now, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The color for breast cancer is pink. You are asked on the last Sunday in the month, the 27th, to wear something pink in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Thank you for that. Now the young people are having a paint and sip. That's going to be on October the 26th from 2 until 6. Now, I hate to say this, but it's true. You all are passing that information table where we have sign-up sheets like grease lightning, <laughs> and that's kind of fast. So, if you don't mind, stop by the table on the way down the steps before you get into the Great Hall and sign up either for the paint and sip or to be a lector, or coffee hour. They need some sign-ups for coffee hour. Now, next Sunday, we will not be in the Great Hall because Tabernacle will be in the Great Hall. So we won't have coffee hour, and you're going to miss it. <laughs> <laughs> so stop by the information table. There are plenty of pens out there. You don't even have to wait for one and uh, get that done. Um, I think you have any? No, okay. Um, I think I'm about to finish. You, you finished, Velma? Yeah. All right. It's okay. Uh, don't forget Bible study on Tuesdays. Velma usually reminds us. And then on Wednesday nights at 7, we have Bible study online on Zoom. So you just use the link that you use all the time for the church's Zoom. And you'll be able to be with Bible study. We're doing the book of Mark. And we're all the way up to chapter 10, and we'll be keep on moving through. So please join us um, for that. The paint and sip is not just for kids. It's for all of us to benefit our children. So ask your friends, and you come and sign up, and they'll have a few different venues of what you can do, breast cancer, 
uh, then some portraits and things like that. And you can even do your own self. You can do a self. You can sit there and paint yourself if you like. So we're going to have that on the on um, on that on that Saturday. And Bridget, our Bridget is going to lead us. So um, avail yourself to all the announcements, uh, please. Um, we do have visitors. Um, come stand up and say your name again because you used to work here, right? Yeah. 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 Your husband and daughter, and you're a longtime member, and you used to work. Were you a parish administrator? You were. Okay. It's kept you straight. Well, wonderful. Glad to have you. And she made ice cream. She made good ice cream. All right. That's my weakness. Uh, and then I have two other friends here today. Uh, Reverend Nathaniel Gibson is the deacon at Memorial. Come on, stand up. He's the deacon at Memorial. He's on break today. And one of my favorite people in the world, Eugenia. Eugenia and her sister Connie. Connie's not here, but they're two twins, two peas in a pod. And uh, they're just so dear to us and so sweet to us. And, and Scott, who's not a visitor anymore, she's just part of the family. So Scott, thank you for being here. And uh, so we, um, we honor all of you all for being with us. Um, there are bags on the back pew on the other side. Yeah, so they, yeah, and I see they're satisfied. They got a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, uh, are any, anyone traveling this week? Any birthdays or anniversaries? Birthdays? Yes. Joe's traveling. We got to keep him in our prayers. He's going to see about family. This is Peter's your birthday's coming up? Yeah, the 16th. You'll be 16, you said? 16, yeah. Six, you'll be 60? 16. Oh, the 16th. <laughs> the 16th. You won't be 60 or 16. <laughs> Any other travelers or nothing like that? Well, gracious God, here's one of your servants who stands before us, and we just thank you for all the joy that she brings and the hard work that she brings to this church community and our community. And God, you have blessed her with many, many, many years. And we ask God for the expectation of many, many more. You said with long life, you would satisfy her. And uh, God, we just thank you for her wisdom and her glory and the honor that she brings to this church. Keep her in the hollow of your hand. Keep her in the realm of your uh, work so that she can continue to bring so much joy and peace to others. And we'll thank you for her life, her strength, and most of all, her spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless our brother Joe as he travels. We ask a special blessing upon his family. Uh, God, that um, you would comfort them and give them peace in the midst of their storm. So take him there and bring him back safely. And God will continue to pray for him and his family that, that you might, your will might be done for them. And that um, all things are in your hands and, and all of time and eternity is in your hands. And so bless him. Keep him. Let your angels encamp around about him. But most of all, give him peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Happy birthday to you, Evola. Yes. We'll have to go to lunch. We'll have to go to lunch. On, on Tuesday, uh, Tuesdays or something, we have, you and I have to go to lunch. Y'all can't go. Y'all don't come on Tuesday. Y'all don't come on Tuesday, so you can't go with us to lunch. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice unto God. It's time for our offering. Oh, Jesus. Help us, Lord.
Let us stand. This God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above in heavenly hosts. Amen. on page 369 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 369. And let us pray together. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory glory. To you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you joining with heavenly chorus and prophets, apostles and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy. And so, Father, we who are redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whatever you drink, it do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Hagar and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, 
Jacob, Leah, and Rachel. God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them remember that Christ died for you. You feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please feel free to come to this table. It is for all the children of God. You may open your hands. We will place a piece of bread in and you may intinct. Or you may consume the bread and then drink from the common cup, which the Eucharistic minister will have in their hand. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Just wait. Take communion. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. No, don't, don't rush. You're good. salvation the body of Christ the bread of heaven the body of Christ the bread of heaven the body of Christ the blood of Christ the cup of salvation the body of Christ the bread of heaven
body of Christ. Right about. Join on page 365, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God passeth all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing Almighty of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
My brothers and sisters, today we were reminded to live our faith to its fullest. Now, with the love of God in our hearts, let us leave this place and bring the good news of the gospel to everyone that we meet. Alleluia, alleluia.